belongs to my Lord and Savior, whose name is Yahweh. Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Wahavakakwadash. Okay, the name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, and His Son's name is Yahweh Shai, in whom we reverence and honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone. Okay, that teach the truth well. And those of you that are in the spirit, and to the hopeful elect across the globe, and to the few, the very few brothers and sisters listening and learning, and to Lakia, I know I thought I sound a bit blocked up. I'm having a few nasal problems, but regardless, we're still going to teach the word by the spirit and power of Yahabai Sham, Yahabashai, without restraint. Okay, everybody's partying, everybody's murphing, everybody's looking for that next level of what dopamine. But the hopeful elect were patiently waiting on your harbor shine. Right? We're waiting on your harbor shine's return. And we are here today, I'm here to pronounce the judgment of his kingdom. Right? Excuse me. Okay. You know, bear with me. All right. So we're gonna start off on Amos 3 and 6. Shall a trumpet be blown in a city and the people be not afraid? So a trumpet's being blown right now in the city of London. Okay. That trumpet is being blown. And it's a sure sound. It's not an unsure sound. It's a sure sound. So sure a trumpet be blown in the city and the people be not afraid. So when you hear this trumpet, really, you're supposed to be afraid. Because when the trumpet would be blown in the cities, what would it be a sign of? Danger. Common destruction. That's what you're supposed to be afraid of. Right? You can shake your head. But this is the words of your heart by Shem Yabashai. Shall there be evil in the city? And the, and the Lord have not done it. So all the evil you see going on, who do you think is doing that? It's Yabashai. He's controlling the evil and he's controlling the good. And we're in an evil time and it's just going to amplify. Right? Well, what Halloween, people are uh, celebrating Halloween. These demonic pagan festivals doing their satanic sacrifices. So it's really Yahabashai, if you're doing that, it's Yahabashai that's putting a spirit on you to do that so you can be destroyed. So we can be justified in destroying you. Right? Verse 7 Surely the Lord Yahweh Shai will do nothing but he revealeth his secrets unto the prophets. So all the secrets, all the mysteries are revealed unto his prophets. Right? Everything. Okay? And part of the mysteries is knowing who's sincere, who's not sincere. Everybody is showing where they stand. Everyone. Okay? Everybody is showing who their allegiance is to. How are you going to save your life if you can't look? How, how, how are you going to stand firmly for your have a shy if you're scared to get your channel taken down? Bear me just a minute. Go straight to Matthews. This is about standing stiffly for Yahweh Shai. A lot of men, they're not really standing stiffly for Yahweh Shai. Okay? We're not here to save our lives. Baby, just a minute. Scripture says we were bought with a price. 
Wherefore, justify your how shy. It's lucky, therefore, glorify your how why you shy. Bear me just a minute. See if I can find it. A lot of men, they're trying to save their lives here. Hey? They're trying to save their channel. Bear me just a minute. Don't want to take too long. If I can't find it, I'll move on. But the scripture says you have to hate your life. You have to hate your life. You can't love your life. Because if you're trying to love your life, you're going to hate it. Okay? You're going to be trying to hold on to something. Attain something. In this, in this wretched flesh. Bear me just a minute. We're not seeking to, to, to save our lives here. Okay? Give me just a minute. Can't find it, we move on anyway. But you can't save your life here. Okay? He that shall save, try to save his life, shall lose it. So you're gonna end up losing it anyway. And you losing your life, it's not also physical, it's not always physical. To lose your life means you've cast off the old man. Okay? You've became renewed. That's part of losing your life. A lot of men don't understand that. How the hell are you going to be strong? But you can't even do the things that Yahweh is telling you to do. You're worried about your channel. That's you trying to save your life. Do we take particular precautions? Yeah, but if your channel gets taken down, it gets taken down. Okay? So this is men, they want it here. They want a reputation here. Right? Let's go to Ecclesiastes 7. It is better to go into the house of mourning. So that's a better lot to be in. The house of mourning represents the truth. Okay? So it's better to be in that state. You're mourning. Because when you're mourning, you're serious. When you're serious, you want salvation. A lot of men are not very serious. How is it Saturday and you're going to have the same pattern? Men coming to camp, he he ha ha. Not taking the service. Why? Because you have to put the spirit in you to act that way. To not really believe. Faith is a gift. Faith is a gift and only a few men really have it. So if you've been given that gift, you better hold on to it. Hold on to it. Because you've seen men that once had that gift and it gets stripped from them. So you better hold on to that gift of faith. Right? This is a very, very dark time we are living in. Very dark. Surrounded by evil, surrounded by wickedness. Surrounded by haters, surrounded by jealousy, just surrounded by evil. But you have to keep what? Your head straight. You have to stay sane in this truth. How do you stay sane? By this word. Right? It is better to go into the house of mourning than to go into the house of feasting. So when you're mourning, when you go to a funeral, you're sad. You're reflecting on the memories you had with this individual you lost. A loved one. So you're reflecting your service. Run to the house of feasting. This world represents the house of feasting. This is what this world represents. The house of feasting. Joy, mirth, having a good time. All right, but this ain't... You gotta know the times and the seasons. This ain't the time to, to be joyful. If we're gonna be joyful, we're gonna be joyful in the world. Not in the world. Clear separation between those that are in the world and those that are not. Run to go into the house of feasting, for that is the end of all men. All right? So that's where you perish, okay? And the living will lay it to his heart. Living is 
so late at tonight. Okay? You can be in this truth, but you can still be dead. You can still have a dead spirit to you. But the living will lay it to heart. Living are going to lay these saints to mind. And no, you know what? You can't be taking this truth as a joke. You have to be serious. Because great destruction is going to come upon these cities. Verse 3, sorrow is better than laughter. So it lets us know, sorrow is better than laughter. Sorrow. When you're laughing, see, not as wrong with laughing, but when you're always laughing, giggling, you're not in a serious mindset. Right? How could you be serious if you're always having fun? For by the sadness of the countenance, your heart is made better. So your mind is actually made better through mourning. It's like a cleanser. You know when you cry, it's like, it's a cleanser. Right? When you're giggly, having fun, you're not really thinking about the evil, the bad times to come. You're not really thinking about that. There's a time and a place for everything. Right now ain't the time to be having fun. It's not the time for that right now. The heart of the ways is in the house of mourning. So if you're ready wise, you're gonna be in a mourning state. It doesn't mean you have to be in um, a woe is me spirit, but your mind concerning this kingdom. Everything is going to grieve you. Everything's going to grieve you because you're in that state. You're in the right mind state. You're in the right mindset. Verse four, the heart of the ways in the house of mourning. So, the house of mourning is the truth, the word. Okay? But the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. So you and that a man's a fool, because he's going to be preoccupied on how he can please the flesh. Right? Not how he can please Yahweh Shai. And people hate it. See, when these scriptures come out, people hate it. Why? Because, see, when you're serious minded about the truth, it's like you're raining on people's parade. That's why the elect are holy. The people, they don't want to be around you. Because it's like you're raining on their parade. It's like, oh, this guy is just too. No, it's not that we're negative. We're just bringing you the truth. Let's go to Ezekiel, Baba Kasha. Okay. Let's get the book of Ezekiel. We're just bringing out what the scriptures say. That's all we're doing. Okay, all we're doing is bringing out what the scriptures say. Don't, don't, don't shoot the messenger. Right? Let's go to Ezekiel and let's see what was written. Right? How can you say you want out of this kingdom, but you want faith? You want to be seen. It's contrary. It's contrary, contrary to the spirit of Yahabai Sham, Yahabashai, completely contrary. Okay. It's good when you're trying to get taken down. That's good. That means you're being effective. Okay, let's go to Ezekiel 3. Ezekiel 3 or 4 This is yet yeah, Ezekiel 3 Right Ezekiel 3 And Actually start at 2 And he's Start at 
2009. And when I looked, behold, hand was sent unto me. Whose hand? Yahabashai's hand. Okay. It was sent unto who? Ezekiel. Right? And lo, a row, a book was therein. A row of a book, which was the scriptures. Okay. The scriptures are likened unto a row. Okay. That bread. Bread is known as a row. What do you do with bread? You eat it. Okay. And it was spread, and, and, and he spread it before me. Okay. So he set it before him and he spread it out. Okay. And it was written, right? And without. And there was like and, and there was written therein lamentations. So there was great lamentations. So when people say, you know what? It's a bit negative. The scripture says there was lamentations. And there's a book of lamentations written by who? I believe it's what, Jeremiah? There was gonna be what? Great lamentations okay woes worries okay great lamentations mourning and woe so this is what we pronounce woes what does woe mean woe means destruction and that's what's coming right nothing but destruction all your aspirations, all your plans, all your trust funds, okay, all the trust funds you've built up, that's gonna come to nothing. All the plans you've had for the two, four years, all that's gonna come to naught, right? All of it. You've got people making plans for the next two, four, five years. This, I don't believe this place is going to go on that long. And he spread it before me and it was written, and without there was written, lamentations, mourning, and woe. So that's what we pronounce. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat thou that thy fineness. And that's what we're doing. That means you've got to read the scriptures all of them okay read the bible from back from front to back okay eat this row and speak unto the house of israel so once you've ate this row that's when you go and speak unto the house of israel okay and declare these words okay you declare it, you speak the words of Yahweh you speak the words of prophecy. So I open my mouth and he calls me to eat the roll. Okay? In other words, digest. So you've got to digest this word in its full entirety. Full. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat and through thy bowels okay your stomach with this roll that I give thee with, with the words so you want to fully fully take in this word when did I eat and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness but it's sweet at first eat honey is sweet but then it becomes bitter our people they want to hear smooth things they want to hear things that appease their emotions but we got to tell you what the straight skinny the things that are going to happen let's go to jeremiah come on now let's go to jeremiah 30 and 5 for thus saith the Lord, Jehovah Shai, we have heard a voice of trembling. Trembling is what? Great fear, panic, of fear and not of peace. 
So this is what Jeremiah heard and this is what he saw. Okay, the vision of what? The future, what was about to come. Just how the true prophets, they have visions of the future. Okay. Ask ye now and see whether a man of travail with child. Okay. Does this mean a man was pregnant? No. That's just your own mind. That's your own perverted mind. Okay. It means a man had his hands on his lines. In panic. Have you ever seen when someone's distressed? They hold their stomach. Right? You see, whether a man doth travail with travel, wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins? Every man means the majority of men. Because the elect are not going to be in that state. Every man means a, a large majority of men. Okay? With their hands on their loins. As a woman in travail, in panic. Okay, so it's describing as a, a woman that's what? In panic, in labour pains. And all faces turned into cowards. So the person's face is turned pale. Okay, when they're in shock. Right? Verse 7. It says, alas, for that day is great. So the day of Jacob's trouble is going to be great. So if it's great, it's going to be, nothing's going to compare to it. Okay. Something that's great is seen as what? Marvelous. So this is going to be a time like never seen before. So that none is like it. So it says, of all the destruction you've seen in this kingdom, ain't nothing's gonna amount to what you're gonna see in the future. It is even a time of Jacob's trouble. So a time is a particular occasion. Okay? Of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. So who's going to be saved out of that? A remnant, which are known as 144,000. Men, women, and children. The others are just going to have to what? Die. For it is the time, so like for it shall come to pass, in that day, he said to Lord, I was shy. Okay. Of hosts. But I will break his yoke from off thy neck. This is concerning our captivity. And I will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall more serve themselves of him. Of who? Esau. Okay. Let's jump to Isaiah 13. happening you'd have hundreds of people standing up here you would if they really knew what was about to happen what was already about to come upon the earth you would have an abundance of people listening you really would no okay Isaiah 13 let's go straight to verse 6 scripture says how ye Okay, how ye? So when you're howling, what is it? You're just lamenting. It's a cry of grief. Okay. So you're gonna have many, many a people howling. Right. Screaming. Whirling like banshees. Many. Right? 
How? For the day of Yahweh, I was shy. Is that hunt? Okay. Bear me just a minute. How ye for the day of the Lord Yahweh Shai? Is that hunt? So it's snare. So knowing it's snare, knowing it's at hand, what are we looking for? His return. We're looking out for the signs and we're measuring that through the scriptures. And it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. A destruction, not with peace. Destruction is something that's not good. Destruction is what? Terror. Destruction is calamity. Right? And who's it coming from? From the Almighty. From Yahab Aisham, Yahabashai. Right? Wherefore shall all hands be faint? All hands are going to be faint. Faint means weak. Okay? All hands shall be faint. And every man's heart shall melt. And you go over to that word melt in uh, Hebrew is H4549. Masas. Which means to melt away, to be discouraged. Okay? To grow faint. So people, they're gonna grow faint. They're gonna grow discouraged. Okay? That's why it's so important to what? Have faith in these times we are living in. It's so important, it's so fundamental. Right? And this is speaking about, yeah, people in the world, also men in the truth. They're gonna grow faint. You got men already growing faint. And things ain't really even gotten bad, really bad like that yet. Right? They shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrows. Pangs is pain. Tremors. Okay? And pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. Okay? And pangs and sorrows, intolerable anguish in reference to dire calamities preceding the event of what? The Messiah to return. So before even Yahweh Shai returns, these things are going to come. Great anguish. And this is before Yahweh Shai returns. Okay? And this is going to be the judgment to what? Of our own people. For their own wickedness. That's why we say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay, this is not a joke. As some men take this truth as what? A joke. Okay? They shall be amazed at one another. Amazed is what's surprised. So why are the people going to be amazed at one another? Because you're going to have neighbours killing each other, pillaging, people roaming. So people are going to be amazed at what's happening, the calamities. Okay? Complete and utter chaos. Complete and utter panic. People are going to be amazed. Why? Because they never thought this could happen. They never thought this would happen to them. See, most of these people, they're in a delusional mindset. They're not dealing with reality. Okay? They're not dealing with reality. And that's why a lot of our people, they can't come to the truth. Because they're not dealing with reality. They don't want to deal with the hard reality of what's to come. 
they stay deluded, okay? In their false perception. Their faces shall be as flames. So what does that mean? Basically, that's panic through fright. That's when it means their faces shall be as flames. Behold, the day of the Lord Jabashai cometh, right? Cruel, both. Sam's cruel. It's not, it's not pleasant, is it, if something's cruel? The both with love and fierce anger. So it says, fierce anger. That's how Yahweh is coming back. Not soft, not handing out tulips and daisies. First anger. Okay, first. Okay. So if someone's angry, they're upset with something. Someone ain't just angry for nothing. Okay. Let's go to Matthew's 10. Thirty-four. Think not that I'm come to send peace. See, I'm sure you ain't coming to send peace upon this earth. Okay. Well, the, the churches are teaching you that prosperity. Scripture says, think not. Don't even think that in your mind, because if you're thinking that, you're suddenly mistaken. Right. Think not that Yahushua is coming to send peace. Right? Upon earth. He came not to send peace but a sword. And what's a sword for? For dividing. So Yahushua is going to be doing a lot of dividing. Right? And that dividing is even in the truth. You've got the house of the what? The house of David. And you have the house of Sal, and that's even being shown as well. The house of Sal is being shown. And the house of Sal are going to have what an evil, wicked mind. To what? Towards the house of David. They're going to be very deceitful. Right? And he shall destroy. Like and shall lay the land desolate. So the land of America is going to be laid desolate. Okay? Desolate means it's going to be emptied. Right? You shall lay the land desolate. And you shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. So yes, these people says, oh, you know, God, he doesn't like, he doesn't hate the person, he hates the sin. No, he hates the sin and he hates the person that's committing it. Right? That's why he says he's going to destroy the sinners out of it. He's going to destroy the sinners out of that land and different parts of the earth. That's why we teach, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Right? For the stars of heaven, right? And the constellations, Right? Shall not give their light. So even the stars are going to be blocked out. What's going to block out the stars? That nuclear fire. Okay. And there's going to be fires in the cities. They're also going to be what? Set. People are going to be set in fires. It's Jacob's trouble. It might even be what? In winter. So you may even have fires being set. All types of things are going to be happening. It's going to be um, cars being set alight and the petrol stations by this time, they're going to be shut down. Right? You're going to have the chariots making their appearance, zapping people, zapping buildings. So all these things are going to happen. Right? It's going to be like a domino effect. One thing 
after the other. One calamity after the other. Okay? That's why it's better. See, the Bible started teaching this truth. You're in the right place. It's better to suffer now. It's better to catch that chastisement now. So you don't catch it with what? This world. Okay? And the sun shall be darkened in his coming forth. So what does that mean? That means during daytime, daytime is going to see like, seem like nighttime. Okay? Example, if you have the clouds blocking the sun, sometimes you will not even know what time of day it is. So it's going to be the same. You're not even going to know what time of day it is. The days are going to be dark. Daytime's going to see like, not, seem like nighttime. It's going to be very dark. Right? In his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. It's going to be blocked out. And I will punish the world for their evil and their wicked, for their iniquity. Right? And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. So all this arrogance, all this pomp, that's going to be brought down. That's going to cease. Okay? And what better way of doing it? By what? Distraction. Okay? What better way? We go to Zephaniah. Okay. Let's grab Zephaniah. All these things are coming. And that's what we're out here to warn you of. So if you're on this sign and this truth resonates with your spirit, then repent. Because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But we've got to keep saying that. Right? Bear me just a minute. Go to Zephaniah. This is Zephaniah. Zephaniah, one, okay, and seven, hold thy peace at thy presence of the Lord power, Yahweh, for the day of the Lord is at hand, right, it's near. For the Lord hath prepared a sacrifice. He hath bid his guests. The Lord's preparing that sacrifice. And it's going to be a sacrifice in America. And he hath bid his guests. He's bid his guests to what is truth. Right? As, we, as the scripture says, eat the whole roll. He's bid us what? To this truth. And it shall come to pass in that day of the Lord's sacrifice, I will punish. The princes, princes, which are what? The rulers. They are the princes. And Yahushua is what? Coming to punish them. Okay? Greatly. Okay? And the king's children. Alright? And such as are clothed with strange apparel. Okay, you want to have the apparel of what? The scriptures, the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of Yahweh. If you're teaching another doctrine, you're clothed with a strange apparel. You want to be clothed with what? The apparel of Yahweh. Right? And the scriptures do say, Blessed is he that keeps his garments. Okay? 
And now what? Watch you. In the same day, I will also punish all those that leave for the threshold and fill their master's house with violence and deceit. That's why you want to be what? Honest about this truth. Honest about what you're doing. Right? Jump straight to verse 12. And it shall come to pass, at that time I will search Jerusalem with candlesticks. This is one of my favorite scriptures. Yeah, Jerusalem's gonna be searched. With candlesticks. And them candlesticks are the men and lot. That's them candlesticks. Okay. The candlesticks represent the eyes of the Lord, the angels. Okay. And yes, men are being searched out through the spirit. Men are being searched out. Who really believes, who don't believe, who's a fake, who's a phony. Right? And punish the men that are settled on their lease. Those that are comfortable. Those that don't want to get out of this kingdom, those that are complacent. And say in their heart, say in their heart, their mind, the Lord Jehovah will not do good, neither will he do evil. So what's that? That's a lack of fear for Yahweh Shai. Really, you don't think he's going to do any bad, any evil, just because nothing's happened to you. But he has a way of what? Bringing your what? Deepest fears upon you. Just because nothing ain't happened to you in the moment, doesn't mean you're fine. Doesn't mean you're fine. Verse 13, therefore, their good shall become a booty. And this is gonna be in a time of great trouble. You're gonna have people ravishing, spoiling, Looking for food. Okay. Looking for some type of resource that benefits them in that particular situation they may be in. Right? And their houses are desolation. So even houses are going to be emptied out. Even houses are going to be emptied out completely. And whatever's useful, people are going to take. If there's waters there, if there's food there. It's only going to be the things that are useful. Okay? Gold ain't going to save you. Silver ain't, people are not going to want to take that. All these things are going to be meaningless. You've got, you've got branches dropping off. See, even, even the trees are mourning. You've got branches falling off. I know it's that type of season, but even the trees are mourning. Because even the trees got a spirit to them as well. 